Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update, recording this on Saturday, October 21st. Hope everybody had a good week. Let's run through the markets and then we'll jump into our trades for the week. So the big story, at least for me, has been volatility. You know, I talked about last week on Friday how the VIX exploded up 20%, yet the S&P was down around a half percent just didn't smell right. So I started kind of de-risking, uh, closing, closing some positions or partial positions just to kind of de-risk with the anticipation that we were going to have a bigger move. And then comes Monday and volatility just gets crushed. VIX was down over 10%. Uh, and it seemed like, okay, well, maybe that was just some uncertainty, some fear that was a little out of place. And we were going to kind of continue back to normal. And then we did end up, you know, exploding in volatility again, this time accompanied by uh, some actual movement in the S&P. Uh, but what's interesting is that we kind of had a reversal in volatility versus movement on Friday where we had the S&P down over 1%, but yet volatility had actually contracted uh, a little bit on on Friday, so kind of a kind of a little bit of a nutty, uh, a couple of nutty Fridays from a volatility and price movement perspective. Um, but uh, didn't you know as far as how it affected my trading or profitability, uh, still was able to uh, you know do okay at least not get hurt. Um, but some interesting interesting movement versus volatility that is just not really that normal. So anyway, we'll see what, what what's to come. You know, there's still a lot of uncertainty with everything going on in Israel and and all that stuff, not to mention, you know, everything else looming out there with the Fed and interest rates. We had a boatload of Fed speakers speaking all over the place this week, causing, you know, some some additional volatility in the market. So uh, the good news for us premium sellers is VIX is back up above 20. In fact, it is approaching 22 levels that we haven't seen since March of this year, which was around the time of the whole Silicon Valley bank, uh, regional banking issues going on. That was a, a little bit short-lived volatility where the VIX spiked over 30 uh, but we're uh, clo we closed on Friday right at 21.71 in the VIX. So S&P almost reached the uh, the lows that we saw uh, a few weeks ago back in early October. Uh, Nasdaq pretty similar, almost approaching those uh, those recent lows. The Russell, the weakest of the bunch, blew through those on Friday and added to the downside, excuse me, blew through those on the lows on Thursday and added to that on Friday. And then the Dow kind of similar to the S and P and NASDAQ kind of approaching those, those recent early October lows, uh, gold also exploding, uh, gold up, um, around 10% in the matter of two weeks, which for a, you know, kind of a low volatility type symbol like gold, that's a monster move. Uh, so seeing a big move up in gold, silver uh, moving higher as well. Notes and bonds caught a bid Friday, but continue to get crushed, which means the 10-year yield continuing to push, pushed up to a high of 4.99 before settling in to close at uh, 4.913. Didn't quite get above that 5% level on the 10-year yields. Uh, oil continues to push higher, up above $88 a barrel. And Natty Gas, after having a, a big swing up, had an equally big swing down here the last couple of weeks. Uh, all the grains were up a little bit. The euro and the pound kind of grinded sideways, and Bitcoin trying to trying to hold trying to get above that thirty thousand level, pushed above it last week, pushed above it again before retreating back down below. So we'll see what happens there. All right, so that is the market. Let's take a look at what we did this week with our trades. So here is, let's start with zero DTE. So zero DTE, I ended up red, which based on what I'll show you, uh, how, how good the performance was in power hour, uh, unfortunately still all together for zero DTE ended a little bit red. Let's break down the different zero DTE setups. Uh, we'll start with the AM ratio uh, trades that I do. 
So I had three of those, um, one winner for 2,400, one little scratch for plus 90, and then a loser for 5,360. So my AM trades uh, down about 2,800 for the week on those three trades. Uh, the DKS had a um, one big loser, which ended up putting me in the red on those. Just a couple small winners, one big loser, which based on the way that that trade is structured is what you're going to expect. When you do have a loser, it's going to be sizable. Um, and then, you know, you're going to be over over time. It's a super high probability trade. But when you do have a loser, you're going to be down. So minus 5,500 on those. Uh, the zero day ducks. This is one that I am considering doing away with for a while, at least. Um, I'm gonna. I, I got to do some more digging and testing and things like that. But it's it's certainly been brutal over the last uh, month or so. So minus eight thousand on ducks on those two trades. Uh, let's see, no FOMC trades. JSPs. Uh, these have also been a little bit rough. Um, and these. You know, the, 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 here's the other part of my evaluation of the ducks is that it's the exact same criteria for when we take ducks and JSPs. And when they both get smoked, that can be a pretty sizable loss. You can see like on Friday, I took a pretty size, decent sized position here. Uh, so almost a 9,700 or a little over $9,700 loss just on that one on Friday. Uh, so uh, down on the JSPs for the week. And then Power Hour, thank goodness for Power Hour because it really helped overall. So you can see with Power Hour, let me refresh this, make sure it's up to date. So yeah, a little over 29,000 in profits um, on Power Hour on Monday. All three tranches were winners. On Tuesday, all three tranches were winners. On Wednesday, all three tranches were losers. Thursday, all were winners. And then Friday, tranche one was a small loss, but two and three were nice winners. So Power Hour continues to dominate. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm going to be doing... So I, I like to, as you all know, I like to set my trading strategies one month at a time. So here in the next week, I'll be doing a bunch of evaluation and decide how I'm going to be trading these different strategies for the month of November. Um uh, power hour is not going to change much, but um, but some of the others I'm gonna I'm, I'm most likely gonna make some tweaks to those. Uh, PM ratio iron condors, and then I'll I'll just I'll put quiet lunches in there as kind of one category. So just three of those trades; those were down a few thousand total. Had a uh, PM ratio on Tuesday that was a loser. A quiet lunch on Wednesday that was a winner, and then one on Wednesday, a PM ratio that was a, a loser. So down on those, and then I don't think I did any ricks this week, if I remember right. Yeah, no ricks. So that's it for zero DTE. So um, some losses in there, uh, except for Power Hour. Power, power Hour <clears throat> did very, very well. All right, so dynamic butterflies. The only thing I did on those was time flies. Had some nice winners on time flies. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six closed trades. All six were winners. Um, thousand bucks, seven eighty. This one was a little scratch. Thousand, seventeen hundred, thirteen hundred. Uh, this one's still open. So some nice winners. Almost six thousand on time flies for the week. And then dynamic calendars. Let me get all these checked. Had some positive PL in calendars for the week. Let's look that update, refresh it, make sure I got that all good. Yeah, so plus uh, almost 3,700 in profits on calendars. Had a 5.7 that was a winner, had a 3.6 that was a small $140 loser. A small winner for a BNB, a $1,400 winner for a TGIF, a $1,200 winner on a 1 2, and another uh, 1 2 winner for 540. All right. Next up would be Iron Ducks. Had just the one loser. Yeah. Took a loss on a. Um, 
on an SPX duck, minus 675 on that one. That one's still open. Option selling. So uh, we've got a VIX hedge on. I closed part of that, so I booked a, a little bit of a profit on that one. These short strangles, these were just rolls. So those those profits are, are credits that were booked on the rolls, but those are still open as well. So no closed trades on the options selling for the week. And then lastly, portfolio margin. So this is this was these positions were the trickiest of all with this volatility that I talked about in the beginning. A lot of these are negative Vega trades. And so when volatility exploded, but yet price didn't move last week, uh, those were some that I had to shed. Uh, overall, a uh, little bit red for the week, minus 3,700. Um, we've got a, a, a golden butterfly that I closed half of, so I booked over 4,600. If that one, if price doesn't move too much, uh, I've got a chance to book a really nice profit on the rest of that on Monday. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. And then uh, had to close a golden goose for minus 4K, a Humpty for minus 6,200. Small $300 winner on that one, uh, minus 5,600 on that one, uh, plus 600 on that one, and plus 3,000 on that one, and then a plus 1,800 on a PM time fly. So those are all my trades. Those are all my positions. Hope everybody has a good rest of your weekend. Talk to you next week.